Good evening. We're going to talk about the language of love. Pentecost is, in a sense, the birthday of the church, but it was an important Jewish festival before it became a Christian festival. It was one of the three pilgrimage festivals that were ideally spent in Jerusalem and at the temple. It occurred 50 days after Passover, which was the celebration and commemoration of Israel's liberation from Egypt. It recalled not only the giving of the covenant to Israel at Mount Sinai, but also the creation of a new kind of community, a radically different way of living after being slaves in Egypt. And the early Christians incorporated these themes into their understanding of Pentecost as well. For example, the late great biblical scholar Marcus Borg said, the central affirmation of Pentecost is that the spirit promised by Jesus is now present among his followers and in the world. The spirit is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ. This claim is foundational to the New Testament and to early Christianity. Most Christian people are familiar with Luke's Pentecost story that we find here in Acts. The symbols of wind and fire represent God's presence in powerful and dramatic ways. Suddenly, those gathered disciples understood. The scared disciples becoming courageous proclaimers, and the hesitant and doubt-filled ones are now bold and assured. The Aramaic-speaking ones now heard and spoke all possible languages. What in the world is happening? Jesus had promised from the very beginning that he would have to leave, but that he would not leave his disciples alone. Again and again, he told them that he would die and leave them, but the disciples did not believe it. They didn't want to believe it. In fact, they often responded with anger, saying, stop talking like that. Soon, the unthinkable happened, and they all, in their own way, had to go back to life as before. The memories of Jesus were fading, becoming like a fairy tale, sadness settling in because they missed their friend, disappointment setting in because, in a moment, it seemed all was lost. And then he appears, just like he said he would. Once again, he walks and talks with them. He reminds them that they are to carry on the work that he had begun. Although he had to leave, he would not leave them alone. He would send his spirit. As he was lifted into the heavens, he told them to go back to Jerusalem and to wait there for a little while. I can only imagine how excited and apprehensive they were when they gathered again in an upper room. This time, they couldn't go back to life as usual. They had not just witnessed their friend and teacher and Lord die, but they had experienced his resurrection. They had touched his wounds. They had eaten meals with him. They had seen him show up in locked rooms and disappear into thin air. They had been reminded of their mission to continue Jesus' work, to continue healing, exercising demons, restoring, forgiving, peacemaking, and loving. As they went about their work, they were to remind those around them that the kingdom of God was present, the shalom of God, the wholeness and completeness of God was taking form right before their eyes. Imagine if our congregation were gathered in the upper room. We're supposed to do what? How are we supposed to do what Jesus did? There's no way we can be like him. It would be easier for us to just be good, be lawful, to settle for the safe and average doings of religious life. Occasional church attendance, a Bible study here or there, a check in the offering plate, and a service project once in a while. We can do that. That's achievable. After all, it's the language we understand, a language of fellowship. But Jesus had other things in mind. His life, death, and resurrection showed us that we could become more. We could become agents of God's language of love, not just to communicate with those whom we know, who look like us and live like us and behave like us, not just to those who speak our language, 
but instead with all humanity. The love language, the language of redemption, new life, forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace is a universal language that opens the pathways for all of creation to live into the fullness of God right here, right now. On our own, we're unable to do this. We cannot learn this love language on our own through the latest app. We too need a comforter, one that comes and empowers us to be about God's work in ways that are unimaginable. We too need Jesus with us always. That's the only way we can continue his work. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, I pray that we are waiting, waiting for the promised spirit to come into our congregation, to come into our lives. Can you hear it? You can't miss it. According to the story of our faith, it came loudly, obvious and difference making. It came howling, breathtaking. It was on fire. The unexplainable happened. The pneuma, wind, spirit of God blew into the upper room and flames of fire rested over the disciples' heads. They could not see their own flame, but they could see the flame in each other. The flames resting, hot and searing, marking the disciples as the beloved community of Jesus, marking them as those able to proclaim God's love message to anyone who needed to hear it. These timid, stressed-out disciples found themselves preaching, testifying to who God was and what God had done in their lives. And people listened. The crowd grew. Some in the crowd wondered if they were drunk because they had no other way to explain it. You and I might have assumed the same thing. But then Peter gave voice to what was happening, and as he preached, I imagine that all these people, the locals, strangers, and foreigners, young and old, began to breathe more deeply. They started out purposefully to inhale some of the spirit breath into their own lungs. And the church was breathed and birthed into being. People far and wide, in all kinds of languages and all kinds of traditions, began to speak of how God and how God was at work in their lives and in the world. The breath of God blew freely and wildly, filling their lungs, giving them new courage and strength. As Christ's body, the church, was knit together and began to move on its own. Here's the kicker to this meaningful, powerful, lovely story. We cannot keep it contained in the past. God's Spirit still works this way. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God, is at work here and now. Through scripture and prayers, through music and proclamation, through experience and relationships, God's holy breath challenges us, comforts us scares us, clarifies things for us. The story of Pentecost tells us that if we're open to breathing it in, if we dare to pray, come Holy Spirit, we will find our own lungs filled to the gills with courage, strength, and passion, a faith we didn't know we had. As with people at Pentecost, God invites us to experience the fullness of life which God intends with every holy breath. We're invited to breathe deeply and consciously in every moment of our lives. Breathing deeply, expecting to be filled with God's Spirit, expecting to be changed by it as it fills our lungs, expecting that we might see things we could never imagine or speak boldly of God's love for all people. The crowds who heard the proclamation of Jesus were not your everyday crowds. The crowds represented humanity across time and space, faithful ones who spoke all the known languages, faithful ones who gathered to worship God in Jerusalem. The God of Israel reminded all who gathered that they too belonged, that the message of Jesus was for them and for everyone. The Pentecost message was not just heard, it was understood. 
Jesus' disciples seemed to command every language spoken in the gathering, speaking with authority, mastery, and confidence. The Spirit becoming the interpreter. The tongues of fire providing a sign of God's presence. A universal message that would change everything. Some, sensing the Spirit of God at work, marveled at the experience, but others found it too hard to believe, blaming it on drunkenness. Today, we the disciples who gather in a room together have a question to answer. What are we waiting for? Many of us have gathered in such a room for many years. We've come and we've gone. We've heard the story of our faith repeatedly. We might even remember the first time we heard about Pentecost in Sunday school or Bible school or a sermon or a song. It would be easy to come to this day with no new expectations. The promise of Jesus to those who gathered in that upper room is our promise too. We too have walked with Jesus, have heard the stories of Jesus, and have chosen to follow in the way of Jesus. We, too, have heard the promise of God's Spirit that will be poured out on us in every stage of our lives. We might have experienced it in the child being baptized, in the anointing of one who is sick, in the gathering at the communion table. The Spirit has called forth and has shown up repeatedly. I wonder, did we perceive it? Did we welcome it? Did we follow it? I invite you to pay attention. Can you hear the howl of the Spirit's entrance into our spaces of worship? Can you see the flames appearing above your brothers and sisters? Can you feel your tongue free to speak the language of love to those who desperately need the good news? Are we understood? On this Pentecost Sunday, we must get ready. The world around us continues to grow more diverse, more bilingual, or multilingual. What would it look like for us, by the power of the Spirit, to speak and act out the good news in ways that everyone can understand? To use love language in ways that connect with the whole world? Look around you. What do you see? Who is gathering? And what are they gathering about? How are your neighbors, co-workers, and acquaintances spending their time? Where is the Spirit showing up? How is God breaking into history in the places where we live and work and play? Who are the disciples of Jesus who've chosen to follow in his way? The ones who gather around the table again and again, asking for the Spirit to come, to be poured out on us who have gathered in his name. The ones who wait expectantly in our sanctuaries of worship to be empowered from on high so that the mission of Jesus can continue through us. Because we have chosen discipleship and the Spirit has been and will continue to be poured out on us, we have the opportunity and honor to be multilingual, Spirit-possessed proclaimers of the good news of Jesus to a hurting, hungry, sometimes hopeless world. Let us be understood so that the promise of Joel is fulfilled as at that first Pentecost and we can be heard by all who have ears to hear. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. One of the most ancient hymns of Pentecost goes this way. Come, Holy Spirit, our souls inspire, and lighten with celestial fire. 
It's a prayer that the ignition begun on that first Pentecost day might continue to burn within the church so we will not lose our fervor, our flare, our flame. It's a petition for the work of God's Spirit to continue in us individually and as the whole body of Christ so we might live our faith with zest and commitment and do the work of mission boldly with imagination. The promise of Pentecost is that every person of faith, every one of us, can be ignited by the Holy Spirit for a deeper expression of belief and a more powerful expression of Christian love and living. We're commissioned to understand and communicate God's love language. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thanks be to God who sends his Spirit to us. Amen. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lungs, our souls, our lives with your breath of courage and good news. Come, Holy Spirit, come and fill us with your power. Come and fill us with your truth. Come and fill us with Christ himself, that we may bear him faithfully in our lives. This we ask in his name and for his sake. Amen.